CNN's Nada Bashir reports on the latest bloodshed in Gaza, and we must warn you, some of what you're about to see is difficult to watch. There are simply no words. This grandfather cradling the body of his seven-year-old granddaughter, Ataf. Beside the shallow grave where she will soon be buried. I told her mother that Ataf is now a bird in heaven, Ahmed says, with her aunt, her cousin and her grandmother, who were all waiting for her. You see, we have many martyrs in our family. <laughs> Ahmed says his family had been taking shelter in a school in Khan Yunus when an airstrike hit. It took hours, he says, to reach the nearest hospital, still able to treat little Ataf. But it was too late. Across Gaza, more than 10,000 children have been killed since the war began, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. Many more left orphaned or facing life-changing injuries. In the central city of Deir al-Balah, the airstrikes are near daily. Those who survive left to dig through the rubble with their bare hands in search of their loved ones. Meanwhile, in Rafah, once deemed a safe zone, UNICEF estimates that there are now more than 600,000 children among the over a million people in the area, many taking shelter in these sprawling tent cities. The southern city has, for weeks, come under relentless airstrikes by the Israeli military, who say they are targeting Hamas. But now, a looming ground operation is stoking fears that Rafah could become, as one aid group has described it, a zone of bloodshed. If by some misfortune there's an invasion of Rafah, two-thirds of the population will die, Jabir says. We can't get out of Rafah. We have no other alternative. Israel says it is now calling for a mass evacuation of civilians in the southern city ahead of a planned ground offensive. But it is almost impossible to fathom where else these civilians can turn to. But Rafah has not only become a vital lifeline for the displaced, it is also a crucial gateway for humanitarian aid crossing over from Egypt. And many in the international community are now sounding alarm bells over Israel's warning. And I'm especially alarmed by reports that the Israeli military intends to focus next on Rafah, where hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have been squeezed in a desperate search for safety. The US State Department has warned that it cannot support an Israeli military operation in Rafah without serious planning for civilians there. With US President Joe Biden on Thursday describing Israel's actions in Gaza as, quote, over the top. But Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has already dismissed a proposal from Hamas for a prolonged truce, which would see a phased withdrawal of Israeli troops from Gaza and a gradual release of hostages in exchange for Palestinian prisoners. Netanyahu, who described the proposal as delusional, has vowed to push ahead until a, quote, complete victory over Hamas is achieved, leaving little hope for diplomacy as negotiations continue and little hope for what lies ahead in Gaza.